Okay guys, in this lecture we are going to study techniques of integration. We have seven techniques of integration, antiderivative, use substitution, integration by parts, trigonometric integration, trigonometric substitution, partial fraction and tangent substitution. And now we have also seven uh, different integrals, three, three these are and one here. Now we are going to understand which technique is suitable for which uh, integral. Let us start. Okay, this is the first question. Here integral, we have a fraction 1 over cos x minus sin x minus 1. So, now we have to understand which technique is suitable for this one. We don't know its antiderivative and substitution will not work. Integration by parts will not work. Trigonometric integration, it has trigonometric expression, but in trigonometric integration, we only care uh, the product. Of the trigonometric functions partial fraction no it's not only partial fraction so seventh techniques tangent substitution will work here what is tangent substitution we know that we will let t equal to tangent x over 2 then if we differentiate and plug the value of secant so we will get this dx and the other values are sin x over 2 is t over square root plus 1 t squared then cosine x has this value from this if we use simple algebra so we can get uh, sin x with complete angle and cosine x with complete angle so this is what we need here so now we are going to plug cosine x sin x value and the value of the dx this is what we need here so if we plug we have this expression so now we have to simplify this one you see we have 1 plus t square with dt in the denominator if we multiply in this one in the denominator and taking two outside so our expression has this form then we can further simplify so it is look like this one so now it just look like an oddly partial fraction we can apply partial fraction or we can just use simple algebra because it's a simple fraction so by adding t and by subtracting t and then we can split it into different parts so these are simple integral both has answer in terms of ln function yes ln 1 plus t minus ln t so this is the answer to our first question then we have to replug the value of t so that t is equal we have decided tangent x over 2 so our answer is this one now second question so here we have fraction and square root and here if you are smart you can easily understand antiderivative is not possible u substitution not possible integration by parts not possible so here we need trigonometric substitution yes so for this kind of expression we plug x equal to secant theta a is 1 so x equal to secant theta so dx equal to secant theta tangent theta so by plugging this one this has this form then simple algebra and then we have tangent square theta and whenever we have tangent square theta so only way to get rid of the integral to plug the, its value secant square theta minus 1 so then secant square theta antiderivative is tangent theta and but the answer is now in terms of theta now we have to replug the value of theta so from our substitution we can get theta equal to this one then we can use right triangle where angle is theta and secant theta is equal to x so it is hypotenuse over base so then by pythagoras theorem we end up this vertical length so tangent theta from this right triangle is the square root x square minus 1 over 1. No need to write the 1. And theta we already know secant inverse x and plus c. So this is the answer to second integral. Third integral. Here antiderivative now. U substitution will not work. Integration of parts no. Trigonometric integration no. Trigonometric substitution no. Simple it's a part, so 
So, antiderivative is going to be, oh, first choice, we are going to partial fraction. Oh, no. So, antiderivative will work here. So, antiderivative how? Because here we cannot make factor in the denominator. So, it is look like the inverse function antiderivative. Yes, we can rearrange it like this one. Then this will be written x square plus 2x plus 1 plus 1. So, first three term is the square of this expression. So, yes, now it's a uh, antiderivative is look like tangent inverse x. Yes, if you have this kind of integral, its antiderivative is simply this one. So, here a is equal 1 and x is x plus 1. So, this is tangent inverse x plus 1 plus c. This is the answer. Okay. Now, fourth integral. This is clearly ting uh, trigonometric integral and you can see the power of the trigonometric function this is what we are looking for when we have to apply trigonometric integration so here tangent has odd power this is what we have to notice because we only notice the secant even power so tangent has power 4 so we will split tangent into two power one has four and other has one then we will convert tangent uh, by this identity to secant square minus 1. And here I have also split secant 9 because we need the derivative of secant. So, so we have this expression. Then we will do substitution on the procedure. So u equal to secant s, then du is secant x tangent s. So integral has this form. This is just a polynomial integral. By simplification, you have three term. Then you can easily integrate this one by power rule of ordinary functions. Then we have to replug the value of of u. So our answer is this one. Okay. So fifth integral. Here we cannot write any derivative. We cannot do substitution. So here we can apply integration by parts. Whenever you have a log function simple and inverse trigonometric function so the best way apply integration by parts okay we can write the function like this one then now we have to choose u and b for this formula so let uh, u equal to ln x power 1 over 3 then d we go with dx so now we need u du we have du and we need v. v is just x. So we can plug the value in the formula. So our integral has this form. You clearly see what is u, what is dv. So u v minus integral v du. Then we can simplify. So it has this form, simple integral. So this integral, the second term integral answer is x. So this is our answer. Okay, further we can write the answer like this one. Okay, this is the fifth and Now move to sixth one. So this is clearly a fraction, ordinary fraction. So partial fraction is the best technique for this one. So we need the factor in the denominator. So the factor, we have two factor. One is simple linear, other is quadratic. So when you have this kind of factor, you know this fraction equal to a over x plus bx plus c over x square plus 3 because one linear and one quadratic. Now we need the value of a, b and c. Uh, so for this one we will get rid of the denominator. One idea is this one. Then simplification give us this one. So now here you can compare the coefficient on the left and the right side. So one is quadratic coefficient has this one. Linear coefficient of x has this form. And constant term has this form. From this, if you solve, you will get a 2b minus 1 and c minus 1. So our integral has this form. Initially, it has two part. A is 2. And we have plugged the value of b and c also. So we can further simplify. So we have 3 integral now. 
first one is very easy let me further simplify it and adjust something yes like this one no it is easy first integral is a lane function second is also a lane function you can easily check by a simple substitution third one is a tangent inverse function so this is the answer to this one okay now the last integral this is simply u substitution yes because if you take u equals secant inverse x its derivative is a part of our integral 1 over x x square minus 1 so then by this u substitution you will end up cosine u and cosine u antiderivative is just sine u then you will replug the value of u so this is our answer so hope you enjoy and understand this was thank you very much